My name is Rick Sellens, and now I'd like to do an example where we'll read in data from six separate temperature sensors and look at doing a little basic statistical processing with them using our Jupyter Notebooks data. In the uh, RWS Notes Python code learning sequence, there's a variety of files, including this one about how to uh, read in CSV files from pandas, printing data, and also some stuff about plotting things. Coding and talking at the same time are difficult. It's hard to keep your mind on what you're doing with the code while you're trying to explain what you're doing with the code. Or at least it is for me. So in these videos, I'll show you what I have done in the code as examples. Jupyter Notebooks are great for this because you can break down the code into individual little cells and describe them as small pieces of code that are easier to understand. We're going to use all of those examples in our workbooks when we're printing and plotting some of these time series. So first off, let's read in some data that I took when the temperature sensors were just sitting steady at 25 degrees Celsius. The first cell here imports a bunch of stuff, reads in the file, and prints out the first little bit of the uh, data frame that comes from that file. So we can see time in seconds, six different temperature values, and a uh, battery uh, voltage level value from the, from the system. The second frame here converts that data frame to a NumPy array. And then it's just going to print out uh, a little bit of information about that array. So there we see the, uh, the values from the top line here. And this is the shape. There's 40,000 data points there, so a lot of data. Next, we'll strip off the first column. That's column 0 from the array X, and call it T, the time values. And that's a one-dimensional array. Then we'll take columns 1 through whatever, 1 colon to however far it goes, and put those in the array D. So that's just the data values. Now I'm going to plot some graphs of time and the data values. Column 0 to 6 from the data. That's all six of these temperatures. And I'm going to use this alpha value of 0.5, which makes those plots semi-transparent, so you can sort of see through them. And if I run that, there you can see these semi-transparent plots. And to give you an idea what alpha does, I'll try it again with alpha of 0.1, very faded, or alpha of 0.9, almost solid, totally overwriting each other. So alpha of 0.5 just allows you to see a little bit of a hazy print through from the other colors. This data shows temperatures varying from about 25 to 27 for sensors that were all in the same place. So there's a variation among the sensors and also for any individual sensor, for instance the orange up at the top here, there was also significant variation with time what that individual sensor was giving as an indicated voltage. <clears throat> so if we want to be able to know what's going on, we need to measure some of the statistics of that information. Now, if those sensors were experiencing the same thing for an extended period, it makes, time, makes sense to just average and take standard deviations to get some sense of the uncertainty in an individual reading. And that's what we're doing in this cell down here. This means array is going to be just a set of six zeros. Likewise, the standard deviations array to start off with. Then we'll go through each of the six columns and calculate the mean of all those data values, and the standard deviation of all of those data values, and finally print them out. When we print them out, we see ranges from about 25 to almost 27 for the mean values. 
standard deviations we see always around 0.14 to 0.16. So fairly small variations for a single sensor, even though we've got a larger variation between the, uh, the mean values. If we take the standard deviation of the sample of the means, that is the standard deviation of these numbers, it's a bigger value. So the individual noise within one single transducer is probably related to these standard deviations 0.14 uh, to 0.16 for an individual transducer. And the uncertainty among the means, the variability among the means, is uh, about 0.5 as a standard deviation. If we took two standard deviations, that would be plus or minus more than one degree. So this is a significant uncertainty in a temperature measurement, particularly at room temperature.